Philippian Messages to Will Clayton Church of Christ, July the 28th, 2019. A message of instruction and encouragement on how to get this particular strength. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Now we see from Isaiah 54, which is the text that our brother read for us, and we're going to go back there to pull a few thoughts. And we have to understand something, saints, is that I've seen a lot of people use this. I've seen people have it, sports guys, tattooed on their arms. But I don't think they understand this has nothing to do with the achievement that they're trying to gather. And they're not even uh, saints, some of them possibly. And we have to understand this deals with a battle being brought against the Jewish nation that initially comes from their particular position of error. And one of the things we have to understand is when God retools you back together, puts you back together, you then must go out, as we said before, and go against the grain. The very thing you passed up, now you have to go back up against it. And when you go up against this thing, it's going to try to take you out. It may be your brethren, maybe family, they're going to try to take you out. So I have to make sure you keep, that we keep this in a proper context. This is us just rising up one day, so I want to go accomplish the goal. No weapon, phone against me, sure problem. No, it's not like that. And that's the importance of the text. It says in verse 1, Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not trade. Veil with child. For more the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, say the Lord. Now this is a reference we know toward Sarah. Let's validate Galatians 4.12, 427, hold your finger there. So if you got up and said this, say, okay, I'm barren of uh, finances. See how people do that. I am barren of glory and no weapon form against me. No, see, you're not, that's not for you. And see, this is where the world takes this and tries to make money with it. Guys will put that on the plaque when they're making millions of dollars. No, that's the only scripture he's akin to. No weapon formed against him to prosper. But it's not going to help him spiritually. Galatians 4.27 For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that trade bearest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath a husband. He says, Now brethren, as Isaac was, he says, We are the children of promise. But as then that he was born after the flesh, persecuted him, which would be Ishmael, that was born after the spirit, even so it is not. Nevertheless, what said the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman, said to the about, and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So this is making its reference as you read more of that to Sarah versus Hagar. So we go back now to Isaiah 54. So if you are Hagar and you cry no weapon be formed against me, you mock yourself because it will be formed against you. This is for those who are believers in God and are achieving something that will glorify the Lord. That's the thing we have to understand. Uh, verse 2, enlarge the place of thy tent. It's encouraging Israel. Get ready to explode. You're going to be blessed as, as Sarah is encouraged to be a, a, a mother of many, many nations because of the belief system that they will have. Not just the literal born Jews. The belief system will go into all the nations. And that's what this makes reference to. So it says, you know, if a person was expecting to have some guests, that they'll stretch forth the curtains of their habitation. Spare not, lift not cause, and strengthen the stake. The stake would be what holds down the tent. So strengthen it, you know, so it's going to be swelling up. It might pop loose and there'll be no coverage. He says, For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. What is this talking about? This isn't talking about the success of Israel financially or physically. This is talking about the success of the spiritual nation, Israel. This way it says, how will we inherit the Gentiles? The Gentiles are an inheritance to us as servants. They have to come to us and we have to give them life-giving words. They cannot attack us so you need not fear them because the Gentiles have been whooping Israel like a child up to this point. He says, fear not. Notice how many times I want you to see, brethren. Fear not. 
Notice how many times the Lord's going to say this. I want to shout something. With you. The Lord does not like scary saints. I'm telling you, scary saints get beat down and they get punished by the law. How do we know? The Bible says the fearful and the unbelieving are cast in the pit right with Satan, the beast, and all the other ugly things of the life that we are involved with. So we have to understand something. The law doesn't like scary folks. And, but people can get excited, you know. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to get married. Whatever it can be. And it, it focus on the physical thing. We're going to build a house. We're going to have a, a rent house. We're going to pay bills through that. No weapon formed against me shall proceed. See, you're in the wrong. You're a football player on a basketball court. With a baseball uniform on. You are, you are not even involved in that. You have to understand. That's not, this isn't about finances. This isn't about even physically having a family. This is about a spiritual accomplishment. So he says. A spiritual accomplishment. Fear not. For thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. And shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. You have to understand Israel in its in its in fledging as it before it gets to the land. They're ashamed. They're slaves, beaten, tossed to and fro. They eating good because they ain't now. Yeah, we eating God. Why wouldn't you feed your slave good? Who has a work truck and doesn't change oil on it? You know, or put oil in it at least. Who doesn't wash the windows and keep the tie? The thing catch on the side of the road between here and San Antonio. So you'll be no making money and about to get a ticket. So you take care of those things. So just getting fed good. And that's what the world fails at. Just getting fed. Israel was fed good. They say we had garlic, cucumbers, flesh pots. Man, we was eating good. But they were being dogged out in Egypt. So we have to understand. Be not dismayed by the gifts that people give you that are abusing you. You cannot let them take your relationship from you that you have with the Lord. And so we have to understand here, he says clearly, that uh, for why? Why should she not be a widowhood? Why, why should she not be sorrowful? How, how does she fall to widowhood? Because God cuts her loose. You know, that's it, man. You know, 400 years, I'm not saying nothing to you. You cut. You're done. I'm going to send somebody. And it's like a woman that is a widow. How do we know? Let's go to Romans 7. See, this is how he tied the scriptures in, brethren. The scriptures are not, you know, sometimes I think people feel it's good writing, good reading. It's a nice book to read. It's ridiculous mentality. Romans chapter number 7 as an explanation concerning how and what actually died. And why should there be a feeling of widowhood? Romans 7 and 1. Know you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath the husband is bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. Watch, if the husband be dead. Now look at this thing. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she should be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also have become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another. How is that possible? Even to him who is raised from the dead, that would be Jesus, that we should spring or bring forth fruit unto God. Let's go back to Romans, to Isaiah. We have to understand is that in the analogy, the parable cannot be linked up exact. You will destroy yourself and the meaning. The parable is alongside and when you're alongside of something there's something different that you're by and so we have to understand is that in the relationship with God and Israel Israel is the thing that is separated and they're like a widow they have nothing now because this isn't encouraging Hagar she's not the widow this is encouraging the nation of Israel and it isn't that Abraham died and left Sarah. So you're getting the thing confused. No. Sarah dies and leaves Abraham. So how is the analogy together? God is detached from Israel. And that allows them to marry Christ. Because they cannot marry Christ. And then they must die in the water. Because if that was God's old wife. 
They can never marry his son. And that's what he said. Oh, that's how I connect. That is exactly how I connect. And you have to keep it that way. Because God is the father. Jesus is the son. He cannot give his bride to Jesus. But if she dies in the water, she's brought forth new. And she is adjoined to the new husband, Christ. And, and that's why when people try to use these analogies in the denominational world, they make a fool of themselves. Because there is no way... You can ever have your father's wife. How in the world does Jesus say all mine are thine? And then the term is used married too. Because death in the water. We die. We are buried and resurrected new. And that's why you have no way to connect to the law. Even the Gentile must do the same way. He must die. Be buried and resurrected. And that's why you wasting people time. Letting them think for a minute that they're going to be saved without being properly baptized with the right message and the right method. Telling you, Saint, you, you're sowing a pathway to hell for yourself. It's the worst thing you can do with your life. Because when you read Romans 7, it makes absolutely no sense if you don't line it up that way. It's like, man, what's he talking about? Widow? How, how did Israel ever become widowhood? Because then it's embarrassment. Because the people knew you don't even have no God no more. Look at y'all running around. And you don't have the, you don't, when the last time one of your prophets talked to God, they didn't even have a prophet until John. They had no prophet for 400 years. No communication to God for 400 years. No type of connection for 400 years. Yet some of them remained faithful. Each generation saying Messiah's coming. Messiah's coming. And that's how you and I got to be. We don't need no prophet today. We don't need no miracle. John didn't even do a miracle. What we need is to remain faithful because the Messiah is coming back. And we've got to remember that amidst all the other things that we're trying to do in life. Verse 5. For thy maker is thy husband. There it is. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. For the Lord had called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth when thou wast refused Say it. Who refused her? God. That's what he said. I refuse. I reject you. Why did he tell the nation that your mother is a heart and the children are nothing to me? He said, I've divorced. I've given you a right of divorce. For some reason, people don't understand. For 400 years, God is done with Israel. He's watching over them for a purpose to see, okay, after 400 years, I'm going to see. If you're ready to talk right now. And I'm sending my son. And that's the way it is. And don't think for a minute he will not reject us. Because as the scriptures teach. If the natural branch was yanked out. It is nothing to take the thing. It's not even supposed to be connected there. That, that's nothing. It doesn't even belong now. So it says. Uh, for the Lord had called thee in his purpose. Verse 7. For a small moment I forsaken thee. But with great mercies I gather thee. In a little while. Wrath, I hid my face, he says, from thee for just a moment. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, said the Lord, thy Redeemer. That's talking about the church, saint. The Lord has never looked at Israel that way until he brings them through, through the church. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the water of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn I would not be wroth, which is to be angry, with the no rebuke, he says, "Okay, we're we're, we're going. We're going to have an alliance again. It's got to go through. It's got to go through my son. For the mountains shall depart and the hills removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed," said the Lord that had mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundation with sapphires. You know, people. You know, when people read this. You have to picture this because when you see people with sapphires and beautiful stones, we go bananas. Oh, look how beautiful it is, even if it's on television or picture. But the Lord is saying the beauty here is spiritual. Like a sparkling sapphire, you're beautiful, you're crystal clear, you're valuable. You have valuable to a valuable uh, content uh, within you because it's gonna fill us with his spirit. And the Gentiles just ride on in with the blessing. We shouldn't even be considered. That's how merciful he is. He says, and I will make thy windows of a gate, and the gates of carbuncles, and all the borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression. 
For thou shalt not fear from terror, for it shall not come near thee. See, Keith Smith, don't be afraid. Behold, they shall surely gather together. Watch this. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. He said, your enemy is coming. Yeah, they're coming for you. This is spiritual enemies. Much more difficult than God throwing boulders at you. He says, uh, Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Why, why would thy sake? Because of you. Because of who you are to me. They're going to fall. Listen. If this were true, physically, then why did he let Titus burn that place to the ground? Titus, man, Israel is a joke compared to what it used to be. He burnt that place. The temple was a joke. He tore it up. They were massacred. They were flung like flies being shooed away all over. Even in the text we read in the Bible, the book of Acts, we can comprehend. When Apple and Priscilla meet Paul, you know, y'all comprehend, they ran us out of Rome. First he said, I don't, I don't, he said, I don't even want them in my city. I want them out of my city. Because this is part of God's hatred for Israel. That's why Jesus said, your house is left desolate. And you know, you got these guys, you know, you know, one of the things to help people understand is, is that you can't have a Bible discussion, saints, about the truth of God with a person without the Holy Ghost. So I hope we're aware of that. We won't allow people without the Holy Ghost to try to break down scriptures to us. You think that's possible, right? That's an impossibility. Because that was a case that wouldn't have needed Christ. We'd have just read the scriptures and fixed it ourselves. He says impossible. So they're trying to break down who is a real Jew and who is not. God is through with the Jews. It doesn't matter what color real Jews are. He's done. Amen. Done. I divorced you. And all the only way you're going to ever get back to me is if you marry my son. I got to kill you first though. And I got to make you new because I cannot connect with you. It's the biggest joke on the earth to have a discussion of intelligence with a person without the Holy Ghost while they try to teach you about the in-depth knowledge of God which is hidden from all men including the angels didn't even know it about the salvation of the Gentiles until the church started teaching it. Read Ephesians 3. That's the understanding. They desire to look into it. Well, we didn't know. At one time, nobody knew what he was going to do before he opened it up. And we have to understand you have a gift in your hands. We need to treasure this gift. That's why no weapon formed against you should prosper. This has nothing to do with you getting no business. I see this all the time. Stickers all on people. Call man. You better be careful. For something happening to you. No, well, man, you mocking God. You have no part with it. Only Scripture he knows, and using it to make money, and won't even get baptized to be saved. It says here in verse number uh, sixteen. Behold, I have created the smith that brought the coals. Lord say, I made him in the fire, and that bringing forth an Israel of his word. God is saying, look, if you're worried about them coming up with something against you as a people, you being my people, because remember, we're told we got to turn our weapons into plowshares. We, 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 we're not in battle anymore. See, this was a big shift for Israel, a big shift. So, you know, no, you're not fighting no more. You're not going to fight no more. We're going out to love and save souls. So people start getting nervous. We won't have no sword. No, I told people. Peter put the sword down, man. My goodness, wow. But we do it say, well, the man that blowing that hot air. See, we try to put everything in new terms. Listen, saints. This is, this is difficult, but Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun. You got a cell phone. Do you know that's only communication? What is the difference in a cell phone than me etching out something on stone and having it driven? You got it faster. It's still a message. That's all you got. That's not new. That's called communication. Amen. Travel to the moon. Transportation. How's it new? How's it new? Watching a movie, moving. What's the difference in watching live theater? Some people prefer live theater over television. They do because they say the acting is better because there's no cuss, there's no stopping. You got to be able to really act. Some people love the Tony Award more than they love other awards because Tonys are giving the people that they get no cut. If the scene not over there, you better not mess up. You don't get no Tony. 
get a baloney and walk, take a rod and get out of here, you know. Bomb. I mean, I'm just being real, I'm just being real, you know. It's because it's like, man, people understand it's only theater on a little screen. That's all it is. How is that new? Nothing is new under the sun. But if we don't look at it like that, we'll deceive ourselves and begin to teach something contrary to what God has already said to do. And so he says, I made the God that makes the instrument that you're so afraid of. He said, and I have created the waster to destroy. See, this is what they have to understand when he <coughs> talked to them in Habakkuk. He mentioned to them that a man going to tell you this, Habakkuk chapter 1, but you're not going to believe it. He said, but I'm sending a nation to whoop y'all. He said, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Around verse 12 he says, he going to cross over to think, my God help me do this. And God says, and I'm going to turn it on him. See, what gets an evil nation in trouble that God sends against his people at the time they were getting these physical beatings was that nation would go, your God, my God, daggone this. And when the Lord hear that, who? <laughs> Let's get him. God doesn't play that, saints. Herod died and burst open with worms. Because God said, you going to let them call you a God? Boy, you out your mind. Get him. Instantly died. People don't just, listen, a healthy speaking man, been eating good, given an oration, just don't drop die with no worms, man. That strikes fear in people. Oh, I better watch your mouth. Because we call, all we know is after we said he was a God, he dropped like a lead weight. And it was over. The angel smote him. Smote him. And we have to understand, you should not be afraid of denominationalism. That's where we're going. This is a problem with us. <laughs> I, I hear all of them. I don't know where I go, I hear. Wherever I talk to people. They're taking our youth. And you know what saints start doing? Let's start changing up some stuff to keep the youth. You can't keep no young person that want to be a devil. There's nothing you can feed them, clothe them, or put in their pocket. No such thing. For that much, then, let's get rid of the Bible. I think the Lord gave poor instructions because he didn't give an instruction. Specifically, the dying designed for the youth to keep the denominational world and dag off from taking them. He has no such teaching. And see, this is the problem. So your brethren are falling left and right. And that's why you're starting to see them change. But remember something, saints. I want to give you good encouragement to understand. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I want you to really get this and grab it. If you don't get nothing else, it's sure. God wiped up Shiloh like a man cleaned a floor. And that was his very first place where he put the tabernacle. And it was the holy city. And no man could come and touch it. When acted a fool, disrespected, didn't hold priests accountable, he stomped it and wiped it up. And then he told Israel, okay, we're going to Jerusalem. David, temple by Solomon, beautiful porch, whatever. And he says, ah, Jeremiah, you better tell him. Go take a look at Shiloh. Do you know after all those years, Shiloh was still tough on the floor? You know when you hear the Bible, the Lord says there were owls in the land. You know why saints don't like owls who are Jews? You can't eat them. You can have a hundred owls around you. You'd starve to death. Because if you ate them, you were considered unclean. Owls were bad. So he would say, nothing in there but owls. They go, oh man, we can't go there. Tore up on the floor. Can't eat them things. We'd starve to death. He said, listen to me. They all Jerusalem, Jerusalem. What did he do? Wipe them like a man cleans the floor. See, you don't realize that Jerusalem was so tore up. It, it was just, it was nothing but old and sick people there. They weren't accomplishing nothing. Nobody doing things right. And then people start gravitating other nations come back. Then now the time you pick up with Rome now, you start seeing it looking like it's something now. But in God's eyes, he said, this is a place of desolation, a mockery. This city is nothing to me. And that's when he's talking about the spirituality of the place. There's not going to be any reconstruction of Jerusalem. And they got, ask yourself, why aren't they going now? They can't even deal with it. You got other entities that are there now on the property that used to be there. It's all kind of trouble. You're not getting that property back because the God of heaven said, I told you I was through with you. And you're not going to build nothing for me no more. I don't want you anymore. And they would not get baptized to be saved. And so therefore he says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. 
And every tongue that shall rise against it, look, just the tongue itself. Now, this is where you and I come in, brethren. This is our spiritual ancestors that he's talking about in the future he's going to bring together. Thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn them. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is our heritage. And that's us. We inherit this. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. How are they so clean now? Because they were so distraught. Shame in the youth. No husband. Tore from the floor up. A bunch of babies with no husband like the so to speak. And he says, I'm going to put you back together. And if any tongue says something against you, he says, I'm going to thrash it. I'm going to destroy it. This is what you have, and we should appreciate it, but a lot of times it's hard for the saints to appreciate that which is good. How are we spiritual Jews? Let's go to Romans chapter 2 quick as we get ready to roll this thing together. Because somebody may say, oh, I'm drunk with enthusiasm. How are we possibly connected to these people? Look at Romans chapter 2 and verse 28. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly. Why would I care what color Jews really were? Why would I care the texture of their hair when it's not even about what they look like, including the circumcision, it's about what's in. Amen. That's nothing but a bunch of racists. Neither is that circumcision which is outward and offend. That means nothing, Paul says. And he is a Jew. He is a Jew. He says it means nothing. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Now that's how we ride in. Listen. How are we loved for a lifetime? This love that transcends even into eternity. How is it acquired? Look at Hebrews chapter 12. How are we loved so? How did we acquire such a blessing? Well, the branches that shouldn't even be connected. Hebrews 12 and 5. And you have forgotten the exaltation which speaketh unto you as some children. My son, despise thou not the chasing of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. This is how. Because he whoops out the sin. He teaches it out. He rebukes us. And rebuke is difficult to handle. I have to be strong. I have to want to serve the Lord. Because it's going to come at some point in life. My son, he said, don't despise it. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastened and scourged every son whom he receive it. If you endure chastening, God dealing with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastened it not? But if you be without chastisement, well, are all partakers? Then are you bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. And we gave them reverence. Shall we not much... Rather be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live, for they varied for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. If you don't put it in the action. If you don't let it start to move in your own. You know, you can have a person come and say, you know, look here, uh, I'm your workout coach. Well, he's going to tell you what to do. He's going to pick that weight up. You say, well, I want to pick the little one. I'm saying, no, you got to pick that weight up. Now, you, you, you do three curls. Say, Whoa, that was good. Say, no, we're doing 10. 10. I said, you say, you sitting there, and he grabbed and he dug about 30 of them right quick. And look at you. Okay, your turn now. Just do 10. See, you, you can't outdo them because he's there to help. The exercise method have its effect. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And make straight paths for your feet that said which is name be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and hold us without which no man shall see the Lord. See, so one of the areas that we definitely need in our life, peace and holiness. Definitely not going to see the law without that. Looking diligent, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. See, we don't want, we don't want to fall into that category. See, all it takes is a root. Just one bitter root. You know, a bitter root can poison a lot of people. When they ate that food, the prophet's trying to have a good meal. He said, oh man of God, it's death in the pot. I said, I don't about to eat no more. He said, all right, you know, we're going to get some meal and put in there. You know, what's the analogy? It's a death in a pot. What is Jesus? The bread of life? Put Jesus in it. Jesus will absorb all that evil and get it out. But some people don't want to. It'll be all right. Just don't eat a lot of it. No. Boil it some more. You, can, you know, you can boil poison forever. And all it does is it becomes hot poison. 
I mean, it doesn't go away. It's can't boil it out. Not, not certain things that are of death and a pop. We prosper by avoiding the sins of evil men. That's what the rebuke is for. Listen. Do we have the true bread and water that is everlasting? We do. And the church is given to us freely. Yet many saints. Now I want you to hear this one good. Please. I'm listening to it too. Many saints leave them. Listen carefully. That love them. And believe in them. Listen to the statement. Many saints leave saints that love them. Slash and believe in them. Just as they are. Why? Because they are deceived into going among many other saints who only use them as taskmasters. I need your skills to promote our church. Treating them as merchandise. I'm telling you what I know. and You can't do nothing but pray for them. Making them pay for that which is not bread and water. Look at Exodus 16. Oh, man. Uh -uh. Then, <laughs> some of them end up leaving the church all together. My Lord Jesus, help us. There's nothing you can do about it. What can you do? You can't do nothing about it. You try to tell people the truth about life, and there's nothing you can do. And then, you can't point a finger at the denomination world if you look just like them. How could I point a finger at somebody and say, ha, ha, He's bald. I'm bald. Well, is that not a mockery? You don't have any hair. I don't have any hair. How can you point at somebody and you look just like that's ridiculous? Even children know that. Listen, Exodus chapter 16. And let's take a look at some verses here. Verse 12. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speaking to them, saying, At even you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it shall come to pass that even the quails come up and cover the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew was laid all gone up, he said, That was laid gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, that lay a small round thing. As small, he says, as hoar frost on the ground, new frost on the ground. When the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. For they knew not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. It didn't cost them nothing. They were crying, We have no flesh. We have flesh pots. Oh man, we have nothing to eat. You know, and they, they just whined. And the Lord said, Look, I'm going to give you something to eat. You have to trust me. And it's not going to cost you nothing. They would rather go back to Egypt and pay for meat that can do nothing for them spiritually. This food they would eat gained their faith in God, which propelled them to understand to eat only the word of God. That's what the message was for. And, and they struggled with even that type of mentality. And so, you know, the Lord is gracious to all of us. And he gives us just what we need, but we have to trust him. Look at Numbers chapter 11, if you will. Now watch this switch. My goodness. Are these surely are the sons of God and our brethren the way these act. Numbers 11 and 1. And when the people complained that this pleased the Lord and the Lord heard and his anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost part of the camp. He just burnt some up. See the Lord just gets tired. Saints. I want you to get this. Look at young people say, no man, you know, church of Christ. And you know, we can't do nothing. Everything is a sin. Then sometimes it just, poof. Get rid of him. I'm not talking about Lee kill you. This ain't, this ain't God scared to kill us. It's going to get tired of us sometimes, saints. Be careful. Watch what comes out the mouth. It don't have to be no long death. It can be instantaneous. That's why when things happen, you don't know nothing. Just pray to God, mercy for the fact. Because you don't know nothing what's going on. The Lord just got tired. He's going to burn them up. You know, that group's got, I can't even stomach them. And the people cried to Moses. And when Moses prayed, until the Lord of the Father was coming. Oh, Moses, see, now they're getting burnt. God mad. And they're going to eventually, they got him in trouble too. But Moses, help. You know, they'll tell you, I need y'all to pray for me. He said, You know what, well, you are, uh, we're going to pray for you. Hadn't seen you at church. Yeah, I've been working. I said, I'm talking about going through financial difficulties. You know, uh, I just uh, haven't been able to come to church. Keep me in prayer. For what? That you be destroyed? You're not coming to church. 
What are you doing, son, Paul, and you can't come to church at all? What do you have your hands on when you can't come to church at all? Oh, my God. I want to commend you all, too. And I, I, I wanted to say it last week. I want to commend this congregation. Because I'm telling you, saints, at nighttime, it used to be a skeleton crew. You could drop a pin almost sometimes. If we had ran through a stretch of a few months, you could drop a pin, man. You could hear it clear, you know, metaphorically. But I want to commend you for coming to evening service. Because there is a different lesson taught in the evening. And I know God will bless your life as a result of it. But the idea is that what we have to understand is, is you continue to come to worship regardless to who's there. And you hope and you pray and you encourage people to continue to come. Can't beat them up. Can't do the boogeyman preaching. You're so bound in hell if you don't come back. Enough. But you have to keep teaching truth. There are others that will receive it and you need to hear it. But I want to commend you because this is what great congregations do. They yearn for more when you can. When you can make the effort. But if at any minute you think it's not affecting your life, it won't. As powerful as it is, it will not affect your life. Because you'll just say, oh, I'm just clock, God like clocking, I'm just clocking in. You know what I'm saying? I ain't listen. It's the time of juice, crackers, money. I love Jesus. Pray. Bye. You know, it, it, it's going to do nothing. You have to become a part of the message. Either to accept for rebuke or to accept for encouragement or to accept to validate I'm still going the right way. So it says he called the name of the place Tibera because of the fire of the Lord burned among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Oh my. We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt. Now you were getting beat down working for free. Of course they feed saints. So they'll die and they'll have to do the work themselves. The cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Listen at this. Now when they was there for 400 years, help us, oh God, it's not forsaken us. Help us, oh God. You know, they were crying and whining and howling. But now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all besides this matter before our eyes. Now, now remember, they didn't have nothing to eat. Now they complain about the bread. It is just this man before. And it, the Bible describes this taste was wonderful. It was light wafer with honey. It's a problem, you know? My goodness. And the man was as a coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of delum. And the people went about, gathered it, and ground it in the meals, and beat it in the morning, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as. It says a fresh oil. Now listen, so what does the Lord say unto this, this nation? Look at verse 6. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, who thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle and the congregation, that they may stand with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself. And say unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. You shall eat flesh, for you have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who should give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and you shall eat. And you shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days. But even a whole month until it come out of your nostrils, mm -hmm. as it be loathsome unto you, because that you have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we for our vision? He's gonna give it to you some more. You're gonna get tired, you're gonna get tired of it, you know. He's gonna come, nah, quail again, man. You know, I said, I want the quail meat out your nose. He said, I'm gonna just stuff it in your mouth. Because some saints are just never satisfied. I'm telling you now. Sometimes you find that in your home. I mean, it's got to be real, you know. You know, y'all are, you know, it's like, some people don't have nothing to eat. I mean, I'm telling you, some people don't have nothing to eat. I'm talking about in America. Some guy, when they get jammed, they don't have nothing to eat. They come home and they get nothing to eat. Pork chops again? What? And some people would almost kill for these pork chops. You know what I'm saying? My goodness. You know, you have to sometimes wake your family up and let them know, you know. Sometimes they, you, you watch the TV. They don't even preach like that. Oh, man, the child. My goodness. What else? Is there? What else? What's a bit of that on TV, man? Yeah, sometimes people have to be reminded you have more than you deserve. 
and you don't even appreciate that. Well, God gets tired. He gets tired, so we need to be careful, you know. I have to be careful. Listen. Look at Isaiah 55, verse 1. Isaiah 55, 1. Isaiah 55 and 1. No weapon shall prosper against you. Has God proven it? Yes. He brought them to the desert. Oh my goodness, to the wilderness. What's the chance of getting food that he feeds them? They whine about the bread, he gives them meat. They whine about the water, he gave them water. And finally he said, y'all not going in, not this group. I'll, I'll let your children go in, but not you. Right, I'm going to let your children go in just to show you. I can get anybody in I want, but I don't want y'all. That's what he tell me. I don't want you there. Isaiah 55, 1. Ho, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. And he that had no money, come ye buy. How you going to buy some without money? Because the Lord said, just come and purchase it. Take it. When a man purchases to himself the office of an elder, a deacon, and says he purchases a good thing, he doesn't buy it. It means to accept it, to take it. So he says, come and take it. You don't need no money. Eat, yea, come, buy wine and milk with money, without money, and without price. Now these are metaphoric statements. The Bible says that the word of God is like a comparison to a strong wine. And that's why they had the pouring out of the wine. Because they said the law was going to pour his spirit out. And then they had one that had strong drink. Pour out. Not like these crazy guys pouring out 40 ounces for the dead gangster that's gone. This was uh, to say the law was going to pour out his spirit upon the man. That's what it represents. So they had a drink offering. And so these things represent spirituality. He says come and get this milk. The word of God must be accepted like milk. Without money. He said why far do you spend money for that which is not bread? That nonsense teaching that they were getting from these wicked teachers, it wasn't even edible to the soul. And your labor for that which satisfied, they weren't satisfied, they were still wanting spirituality. Hearken diligently unto me and eat that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. See, this is what he says about spirituality. Hear and your soul shall live, not your body. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure mercies of David. See when we see this we have to understand. This is deeper than the physical David. Not just because David got forgiveness of his sin. This is the spiritual David. How do we want those mercies? Because he raises up Christ from the dead. See that's what you need. You need to want to raise you up from the dead life we're living. While we're on earth to animate our body to do that thing. Where Romans chapter 8 says. To make our mortal bodies be obedient. And then to be resurrected forever. The sure mercy of the spiritual David. Not David the king. The king David Jesus. That's what Ezekiel is talking about. David shall lead them. You, you, need, you need more mercy than just physical David. Because David is waiting on Christ to come. According to Romans 3. You need the sure mercies of Christ. He was merciful unto them. And protected him. And lifted him up. That's what he said. I'm never alone because I always do my father's will. God. The Bible says he was merciful to Christ. And that what he extended when others hated him, protected him, lifted him up, gave him a last night, and gave him a name that is above every name. And that's the thing we have to understand. Finally, how can the world, a worldly minded saint, look at their accomplishments and feel they're victorious in life? How's that possible? However, they have only defeated the physical weapons of the enemies, they have forgotten. We fight that which is not flesh and blood. Turn to 2 Corinthians 10. We'll end here. We prosper by defeating our spiritual enemies because we're trained to fight spirit. See, you know, let's just get real. Now, you know, we can fool ourselves, but we got to get real, saints. You got to get real. I got to get real. The people you know, and even many saints, when they making it and they got green money in their hand, they good to go. They go, and they'll talk about you. He looks like he struggles a lot by now. You know, sometimes the Lord just won't bless. See, they're talking about because they got in that hand money. And you cannot tell me saints don't think like that. You got churches that think like that. I got book, chapter, and verse, Revelation, law, I see it. We don't need of nothing. They were so rich. The whole nation of law, I see it. That land was filthy rich. So rich that history said, one of massive earthquake hit through the area. Rome sent a letter. Do y'all need help? They sent a letter back. We good. How you gonna be good 
I bet you won't get no love like that from San Francisco when that earthquake hit. Begging for help. Them people, those people were rich. And they said, we okay, Rome. Come on, that's a, that's a lot of money. So my nation of Rome, you don't need their help because we, no, of course the church going to be rich because you got a bunch of rich members. But he said, you're poor, wretched, naked, and you're blind because you don't have anything spiritual. Doing good works, got money, got a nice brick building, beautiful stuff. I'm talking about a lot, that's it, but you don't have no spirituality. And saints think like that when they have money. Just a few dollars in the pocket to put a little knot in the pocket will make one walk on air. Because he feels I'm okay. He'll sing better. Jesus gave his life for us. I mean, looking up in the heaven. Bobby B. Brother, Jesus. We all watch the mind go, he ain't giving me much though, man. Uh, it's cursed me. No. <laughs> uh -huh. Look, your victory is in your spiritual win. God isn't concerned about, if God was so concerned about the physical, as we wrap this up, when the men, the two, the two brothers came and one brother said, hey, tell my brothers, Shannon Harrington, say, man, who made me a judge over you? No judge, who come down here to judge, no food, like no money? And then he turns and tells, listen, a man is not valued, to paraphrase, of what he has. And I'm going to share something with you, now. I want to make sure we understand what we're dealing with. And I'm going to make sure I say this to both the men and the women, young and old. Because I don't know when you're going to get married. And some older people get married. Let me shout something with you about money. You're not going to bring nothing to the saints about money can secure nothing in your life to make you happy with the man or woman you got. And if you do, you make me be your first student. I'm going to sit in class. Because I want you to show me any scripture that validates that. You do not have that speech from God in the first dispensation. Moses or Christian. So when you pick a man or a woman to date and with hopes of keeping them, you better make sure that that mouth talks like it's got some sense. Mm -hmm. And them hands know how to stand in their pocket when they mad. Instead of popping you in your face or throwing skillets and grits at your head. You have to understand when you're sitting down talking, you're watching movies, and some guy slaps and Oh man, if a man hit me like that, they'd have to get me, put me in jail because I'd have to kill him. What you think about that? And he go, well, you know, some women are... Oh! After that movie, give him a hug. Nice to know you. See, you don't want to be you. you. You're supposed to know that answer. The only ungodly man would do. You better know how to talk. Or go read some books. This one, 66 of them on how to talk. You have to know how to spot a crook. He may have the most beautiful hair on the earth. And look like, look like Absalom. But I'm telling you. you get fooled. They got a lot of miserable women and men with people with a lot of money in beach homes. And he's sitting out there about to drink a fifth of Jack Daniels looking at the water. Man, I hate, I hate the day I met her at McDonald's. I hate that day. She done gave him everything he wanted. She done gave him everything he wanted. But he, 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 it's no relationship. Because she's tearing at his soul. Or he's tearing at her soul. And you don't understand. And I don't understand. Until you see these things. See it through the scripture's eye. To understand. It's not about the physical accomplishment. It's about the spiritual. Because if you can nail down the spiritual accomplishment. Guess what? You're going to get the physical. Together. You'll work together. You will accomplish what you want. But if you have a spiritual issue, you can be laying in a golden bed and you'll wish you were dead. I'm just telling you. Now we're going to go through a few scriptures and we're going to let you go. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now Paul beg you by the meekness of the gentleness of Christ. When the presence am base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beg you that I may not be bold when I'm present with that confident. Well, I think to be bold against some which think of us if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. See, Paul says, I will walk. No, no. Paul says, if, if Paul has a, a thing on his desk saying, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, you come and ask him, I'm talking about spirituality. You know, he's going, man, Paul, this office tough on the floor. He's going, I'm talking about spirituality. Man, nothing to do with no physical stuff. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, Amen. but mighty. Through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So you know you have some strongholds in life. Sometimes women are kicked to the curb because they're females and businesses and different things. And in the home, sometimes men are kicked to the curb because of their lack of education or skin color. Whatever the skin color may be. 
But you have to understand your weapon of warfare is spirituality. To keep yourself in a position right with God. And he will in due time lift you up. That's what he keeps saying. I lift you up. He told David, I made your name great among the kings of the earth. Like them. But David stayed in line with God. David is talked about. And everybody, almost most people you talk to know something about King David. God said, I made your name great, man. But he says, I made you great. And David let God make him great. And you can have many things you want. You can have beach holes, uh, time share, whatever you want. But you got to keep God straight. Because that same man or woman that can get you that stuff will be in the arms of another lover and leave you behind. See, you can't stop that. You want somebody that wants your heart. Now, don't nobody want to wake up with two cornflakes to eat. We're not talking about craziness, now. Huh? You got to have money and food. Man, nobody's food. But we're talking about sometimes people get beside themselves when tough times come and they don't understand. Is the person that you have with God or either reaching for God? That's a blessing in and of itself. If you bind together, you can accomplish what you want. You forgive each other, work with each other, love each other, trust each other. You know, if you life is funny. Do you know when you don't trust people, you realize that you're not, you can't love them to high potential because you don't trust them. If they don't trust you, you know, you know, it, it, it's it's a head bump. And so he says, these are the things that get put up: casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the old. Obedience of Christ. Do you know that you have a weapon. Being a saint. That you can take one of the roughest guys on the earth. I mean I, I've talked to some saints before. They were talking about Bob, my husband used to. I mean they said you know he used to. Man he used to beat her. I said what? Remember one time I met son? I said man he said, yeah he used to beat her man. That guy would go and pull a car up. And stand by. Stand by the car like a chauffeur. The wife would come out and open the door for him. Close it back. Now. Take off. Used to hear us. Break it down. All the imaginations, all the anger. Saints talking to a finer guy, and now she's treated like a queen. Nobody wants to get beat to cheat that, but what we're saying is you can take anyone. You have sometimes a wild woman, wild woman, maybe like a Jezebel. The doctrine, the love. Look at Goldman Jose. He goes back and get her. Speaks to her peaceably. Tells I'm not going to do you bad either. Because some men, some men, they're going to go back, yeah, I'm going to get you back. But tell you what, it's my time now. Mm, watch him. See, he's going to hell. Because you're supposed to go get her and say, hey, we're going to be right with each other. Start over. Because the Lord said, I'm going to forget all this stuff you did. He said, just like I said, the water won't come over the earth no more. He said, I'm not going to be angry with you no more. That's how he treated Israel. And that's how the thing we have to understand. So finally, we see, he says, uh, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. See, when you fulfill obedience, you take vengeance on disobedience. You know how to pay back the people in the club that got you in trouble? Don't go no more. When you pass by gas, hey, let's keep driving. That's how you pay back. Not pay back the dope dealers that get you in trouble. Don't say nothing no more. Hey man, hey man, we have a little deal going on. No, no. Oh, hey man, you can funny. Hey man, get away from me now. I'm not dealing with you no more. What we had is over, and that's it. Go the other way. Don't deal with him. What fear of you? He said, I made the guy that makes the instruments. He said, So what are you afraid of? The billows they would blow and get that thing hot. Those guys were skilled. Glass blowers making all kind of glass gods and stuff. He said, I made the guy. Say, so what are you scared of him for? You know, you got to understand something. Some of these demonic gods, they look horrific. They'll be all in all types of places. You go out to eat and you go, man, you think you sitting there eating, man, with some nice drink. Boy, look at that thing now. That stuff can strike fear. Yeah, people looking at you, eyeballing you when you walk by. People so demon possessed walk by, no more weapon. Saints sometimes, browed, heavy browed saints. Looking at you. The prophet was told, just preaching. Their head is a rock, but yours is granite. 
That's what he means. You have to say what you have to say, saints. Sometimes you're the only one sitting in the chair and the building's empty. Say what you have to say. Because Jesus is sitting right there. I'm still with you. You all right? I'm still with you. Because if you don't say it, do you know if you don't say it and we're done, do you know the soul you didn't say it to could repent and go to heaven and you'll be Luke 16. Just a little while of Nazareth because you didn't say it. You said it with love, but you have to say it. Because God says that soul is important to me too. I love that soul too. I made them. God loved Pilate, but he just couldn't get him to get right. He loved Herod. Jesus said he's just a fox though. He's such a crook. But he loved them all. God has not made anyone. He even loved the devil. He loved the angels that left. But he cannot accept them in an area of discontent and going against them. And he will not accept us. If you hear you're not a member of the church, it's time to get baptized. If you listen to the message, press the little triangle under the audio and it will show you how to contact us because we're responsible for it and we're going to make calls all over the planet and don't think you're in nowhere too far to be baptized because there's water everywhere on this earth. And we have to accept in our heart and comprehend that. But right here where you're at, that's water. If you need to be baptized, when we get done, you have to acknowledge we'll do that. Acts 19 says, even if you've been baptized before, you're not safe. Paul would be a fool and discredited for baptizing people twice if they didn't need it. Those people were believers, but they had been taught wrong. You cannot be taught wrong and baptized right. You cannot be taught right and baptized by somebody that has no authority to baptize, i.e. lost souls that are not in the church and sisters because they have a different role. You know, for a woman to baptize, it's like telling a guy, you know, you know I want you to have the next baby. Same thing. You know, I've had the first one. It was tough, but I know you can have it. You're stronger than me. Now, when he can have one, now I'll get one of these women that have been redesigned and look like, man, no, a real man. If he can have one, that will blow out the water. Everything God is tough, but you can take it to the bank. The psalmist said, we do not make ourselves. He made us. God gives us. That will never happen. Because God is going to stand. If the Lord said the waters will never overflow the earth again, you haven't seen it happen yet, and it never will. You'll never have a man having a baby. And, and when a man can have a baby, then a woman can baptize and be the conduit. Because he is clear that the male, the example and the teaching that he said, that's why he can be sent out by himself. All he need to do, look at, look who's sent out by himself. By himself, Philip, in a desert. What are the chances of water? Plenty with God involved. Runs right in the water and baptized because he can carry out all the phases to go, to teach, and to baptize. And that's only seen in a man. Not does it make him better? No. Paul said one plants, one waters, God gives increase. That's no one us for no women. That means nothing. It means that that's your role. It doesn't make a woman greater than a man. She can have a baby. She can have a baby without a man. It doesn't make the man great. You know, you know, I hold a seed. You can't do nothing if you don't have an egg. So everybody is equal. But God gives life. And only God can give the increase. We have to accept that. And if we do, God will rescue us. Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be down. Mark 16, 16. In Acts chapter 2, knowing that Christ had died, was buried and resurrected, they asked, What shall we do? Verse 37. He replies, in verse 38, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and all that fall. Even as men as the Lord our God shall call. And when men of the words he testified and encouraged them. Save yourself. You hear the word say, that means somebody's lost. From this unto all, which is a perverted generation. Then they are glad to receive his word will be baptized the same day they were baptized. Three thousand souls added unto them. What they continue in the apostles' doctrine. Nothing else. Not the Sanskrit. Not Hammurabi's code. The Apostles' Doctrine. Breaking of bread. Prayers and the fellowship. Which is the walk in the light. As Christ in the light. Let me tell you something. So I want to give you encouragement. Some of us think that we can't walk like Christ. See that's a put down. That's a put down to God and Christ. And a discredit to the spirit. Listen. We can walk like Christ. We can walk. We, we're, we're not to be Christ. Walk like Christ. You can. But if you're hanging around people that keep telling you you can't, guess what? You won't. You have to get yourself circled around people who are tempting their move in their personal life to walk as Christ. And that's how we help each other. 
If you believe that, we have to understand that they continued in these things, and the Lord added to the church daily, Acts 2 47, such as should be saved. 3,000 souls added unto them. But you have one eunuch in the desert. He hears the word and he wants to be saved. He sees the one. But Philip is the teacher. He says, if you believe it all your heart, you may. He stops the chair and he says, I believe Jesus Christ the Son of God. And that's the signal for Philip to baptize and not to rejoice and begin. Paul says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. For the Jew, Gentile, bond and free and have all been made to drink into one spirit. You think the Holy Ghost is going to forget and baptize somebody and put them in the wrong church? That's an impossibility. That will make him anything but a perfect being. And the Lord tells us baptism saves through Peter. 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22. The life figure where to even baptism specific does also now save us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience to our God. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ who is going on in heaven. Angels, authorities, and powers are being made subject unto him. Christ said himself, Revelation 2, 10. When Jesus makes a promise, you can take it to the bank, it's going to happen. He said, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. A tribulation in 10 days, but be thou faithful unto death. Because what did he say? No weapon formed against you is your prosper. Even jailing, some physical lockdown, Satan and his beast ideas have, cannot stop because nothing formed against you can prosper. And you have to believe that you will make it to heaven, but you have got to follow the instructions of God while on earth. If you believe that, you can be baptized now. Stay standing when we sit down. If you need prayer, come now and together we stand and sing Heaven's Invitation. Just as I am without one dream, but as I'm lost.